I'm Robert and welcome to my channel where I discuss everything automated algorithmic trading or simply algo trading. I've been talking about backtesting with large quantities of data, particularly 59 million candles worth. But in the process of that backtesting, there's some major issues that need to be addressed. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. Now what we see on the chart is the entire history of Euro USD in a backtesting level. All 19 years, almost 20. The gray line in the middle is the median. That is the highest high, the lowest low, this is right at that midpoint. Now if you use mean reversion as your trading technique, then this is the point by which price is going to want to return. And we can see from the way the chart looks that it does do just that. Every time there is a high, the price wants to go back down to the median. Every time there is a low, the price wants to go back up to the median. For the most part, the market is very consistent with this process. And it is a critical point in terms of how the market works. Mean reversion is one of the best techniques to trade that there is. It also provides an exceptional way of determining which way the market is likely to move. If you are up here in this area, then mean reversion suggests you should short a position. However, if you are in the lower range below the median, then mean reversion suggests you should open a long position. So by using this kind of a technique in a market that is clearly cyclical, we have a good, rational, reasonable plausibility that allows us to trade with a reasonable level of confidence. For example, the higher we go in the market, the more likely price is going to sharply correct in a downwards direction. The lower we go in the market, the more likely the price is going to correct in an upwards position. We could actually calculate this in a statistical variance that can be used to help adjust position sizes and whatnot. For example, the further away from the median that we are, the higher the position size we could use as a mechanism and reference point to be able to actually control how much our profit could potentially be for the situation. But the biggest issues that we have with this kind of data is that charts can be unwieldy. In fact, this particular chart is a PNG because the normal graphing program that I use can't handle the excessive amount of data without crashing my tablet. When I tried to graph this amount of data, I ended up with a very, very large HTML and it broke every browser I tried. In fact, it was so large, it even broke the software that I used to create it. So I had to use a static image for this part to represent the entirety of the market. And I chose a particular technique that was useful and it highlighted some interesting facets about my trading choices. So let's zoom in to this picture here and get a good look at some of the context. Now the way I chose to do this is the blue line represents the average of the trade. The red lines 
are the trades that are sold at a loss and the green lines are the trades that sold in profit. Now this is a dollar cost averaging technique. So the entirety of the trade is a net positive. But we can see exactly how that plays out. And in fact, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on the COVID range of the market to actually demonstrate and show much of what happened in a meaningful way. Now I can handle and load one to two years of data in an interactive chart without breaking my software. So that's exactly what I did. And we can see it right here. Of course, the gray line or blockish line, this is the median which we've seen from the other picture. But now for the purposes of the trades, let's zoom into a section of this chart and actually begin to look at just how interesting this pattern looks. As I said, this is the COVID bear market. So let's take and highlight one section. And now let's scale it a little more and isolate one particular point. These interactive charts are really wonderful because they can really help see a lot of good opportunities and break down the world in a very nice and positive way. So we can see one particular completed trade, the blue line representing the average of the trade. And that is important as we see, the more I accumulate, the lower that line goes. We can also see the duration of the average and how it impacts and affects the overall trading style. The red lines, as I said, those are the actual positions that were sold in loss. So those positions lost money. The green lines, however, they made money. And that is the point of what dollar cost averaging is about. The average between both the losses and the profits are a net profit. And we can see the tiny bubble here where you can see the blue line is below the point of sale. That is, we took away a particular level of profitability. But you can see how many trades it took in this market for it to be profitable. This is risk and exposure. So throughout this analysis, by looking at our worst case scenario, by actually looking at the chart and determining how we want to represent the data, we can get an idea of just what kind of trading we want to do. And that really is one of the biggest issues in backtesting when you have such massive quantities of data to be able to actually chart it, to disseminate it in a meaningful way is extremely difficult, particularly when you want to look for a worst case scenario situation. And in fact, in looking at the overall chart, we can see the worst case scenario took place in this region with a very severe market downturn. This really is many of the circumstances that we need to be aware of. Now, there are multitudes of ways of dealing with this process, whether it is fine-tuning the strategy, whether it's looking at different ways of isolating individual trades. But because of having all of this information, 
and running a thorough back test looking at the areas above the median and below the median, we can see within a reasonable level of confidence that the market has a clear and present functionality. That really is the point of what we want to achieve. We want our charts to represent as much meaningful information as possible. And when you're dealing with this level of data, the extreme enormity of 59 million candles, figuring out what you actually need is really quite complicated. It's very difficult, in all honesty, to actually try to ascertain the value of the magnitude that is in such a way not overloading. And as you can see, even with just two years of data, there's so much data here that the chart is struggling. Overall, I have found that one year is reasonable enough and does well for my interactive charting. So as you work with this data, as you work with shaping the data to try to understand exactly what the market is going to do, it becomes incredibly important to think about the process of your data. One of the things that stands out with this situation, as we look at this particular chart and we see how it unfolded, the further away from the mean we went, or the median, the more we took on massive amounts of trades. Some of these trades are quite extensive, pushing the limits of our worst case scenario. So whether or not we look at this in terms of the trending context, as we can see from this particular market, the trend is clearly downwards. Now, because we're below the median, that means we should open up a long position. But in a downward turning market with a trend this steep, that might have an impact on our trading technique and the number of positions that we take on. Now, we could either, one, use the trend as a means of looking for short opportunities that could come back to cause losses, or two, we could actually scale our positions so that the further away from the median we are, the larger our position size. So we can capture and capitalize on the availability of the market in such a way that we are able to realistically profit from circumstances that might otherwise lead into losses. Mean reversion is a wonderful technique if you use it properly. And if you have a strategy like the one we are using, the 1747 moving averages with a 197 trend line, is an exceptional way of trapping and capturing this movement. And in fact, that is what this entire chart represents, is this particular strategy. It's a tested and proving technique that instead of using traditional values, relies on the uniqueness of prime numbers. The normal trading method is a 20, 50, with a 200 trend line. But by just changing it down a little bit, opportunities become more apparent in a more unusual way. Both ways are correct, and both ways have their advantages and disadvantages. It's important to test everything reliably. Take your time, learn to test and study the market. Having this level of data means running simulations on a wide level. 
even if they take an hour to repeat. The information you gain is priceless, particularly if it can save you from losses in your live trading. So that's really it for today. Just a quick overview of what it means to actually take and trade all of this data. And this information can help me take my strategy and apply it to any market, no matter what, because I have a clear understanding of what to look for as I move from market to market. Share your thoughts and let me know what you think. What do you think of trading this much data? Leave me a comment. And remember, if you're a Patreon and you're subscribed to my Patreon, the information, the data files, are available to you for download as a part of your subscription. The links are, of course, available in the description below. Let me know what you think. Share your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and until next time.